TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, little warning screen, just in case. Don't forget, man, if you do want to catch a live, twitch.com is where you can go, man. The username's at the bottom of the screen. And we also got Patreon where we post five days a week. We're going to get into some Wesley Winter. You already knew that was coming, man. Inside London's migrant tent city crisis. I'm honestly, I'm very excited about this video. I don't like because we have a lot of tent cities in Chicago, like around the north side for sure. Um, there's a lot of them. In Miami, I guess there's some like, I think I've seen a few of them. I don't be outside like that in Miami. It's not my hometown, so I don't be. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting. Read them in a week. Talk to me, Wes. Good afternoon. Welcome to Mayfair, one of the most expensive London. and wealthiest places in London. And if you've ever played the board game Monopoly, you'll know Park Lane and Mayfair as the most valuable properties you can buy. However, Park Lane, which is a street not too far away from here, has now been overtaken by migrants, turning it into a tent city. So today we're going to find out who they are and why they're here. Let's go. And like I said, this is one of the most expensive places in London. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, this is going to sound really bad right now. But if I was a resident and I lived here and I walked through that park and it was, and it was tent city, I'd be pissed. I'm not even gonna lie. If I was a resident here and it's the most expensive place in the London to live, I'm upset. Maybe that's a bad on my character as a human being, but I'm mad. It is what it is. I don't pay this much money for this type of energy, is how I would feel. I'm not even gonna be, I'm not, I cannot lie to you. I understand what's going on, but at the same time, you gotta understand how this is hitting my bank account to live right here. And I try to take my, my dog out and do this, do that, and you know what I'm saying? Or I gotta take my daughter on a walk, like, what, like, I'm, right. Some of these properties just here, we go up to the millions <coughs> and tens of millions. That's what I'm saying. And you'll see how it completely changes once we get onto Park Lane. And you'll see the tents that are camped there. So here you get a real idea of where this tent town is. We're next to the busy road and there's a campsite. And behind me have a luxury real estate agent with a salon in Park Lane. This is a real prime spot. And I was speaking to the actual salon owner, owner earlier, obviously didn't want to be on camera. And that's kind of been the story for most people. But he was telling me that people used to beg here and it affected his business. And it would when people are sitting outside your front door. And these people are camped here and been here for, for years and years, apparently. So as you can see here, lots of people begging. Uh, I don't know why they all have these, uh, they all have these waitress bags. The closer I got to the tent town, the more people I saw setting off to beg around London. When I arrived, it seemed that some people were either still sleeping or had already gone out onto the streets. As you can see, some people are still sleeping in here. But this is the, the main tent campsite. There must be at least 10 different tents here. And this is their food where they sit and eat. This is the same um, place. Um, the American dude, what's his name? Nick? Nick? I think his name is Nick. I'm not sure. I did. I did a reaction to his stuff too, and he came through here, and they like rushed him up out of here. It was like a Romanian. Romanian people lived here, I believe. Here they have the water canisters. <coughs> but yeah, as you see, this is the area. Wow. Since it was quiet, I decided to come back later and meet some of the locals instead. So we're in Park Lane. What's the general feel about the tent encampment across the street? Um, I think the issue with it is obviously one of the most prime spots within uh, Mayfair, within London. And then obviously having the, the camp there as well. I mean, you know, it, I think there is a bit of un uneasiness about it. Yeah. But um, I mean, it doesn't affect our day to day, but you definitely notice it. Yeah, no, no, 100%. Like, it wouldn't affect my day to day, but it, it, it would, it, it, I'd be tight. I'd be tight, but only because of the amount of money I spend to live right here. 
Like that's the only reason I'd be I'd be up a little upset. I mean, how affluent is this area? I mean, we've got some expensive cars behind you, but yeah. the properties in general, how much are they go going for around in the area? Um, I mean, it depends, you know, on, obviously on size and everything, but you can go anything from 5 million up to, you know, uh, up to, you know, 70, 80 million. It really just depends on size, but it is, it, you know, it's a very affluent area. Yeah. It's one of the, it always has been and it always will be. Um, Wait, are we starting at 5 million? So I think that is kind of like a sore subject within within the local area i wish that they would just go away from there they've spoiled the whole look of park lake yeah what's the issue with the people living there though you said they, they spoiled the area what is it particularly that is bothering the locals the aesthetic just the the tents that are put up that's supposed to be green land that's not supposed to be places where people come to shelter for that we have shelters not great is it I don't like it, but uh, they, you know, they, they, I think the worst of one is when they sleep underneath the um, entrances to the um, shops down here. They lay the mattresses out and bare um, continental quilts and whatever, you know. Right, so you think here's a, a little bit better, as much as, as bad it's as it is? As, it's not as in your face as the <coughs> ones down the road. I, mean, I feel like it's a mixture of homeless people that are uh, native to the land and migrants at the same time. I mean, I drive, ride down Tottenham Court Road yeah. and there's one sat right outside all day. Right. You know, they just sit there all day. So, yeah, who, yeah. Do, who do you think these people are? I mean, some people are begging gangs and, you know. I don't know whether they're begging because of the fact that they're not over here actually grabbing any money off of, are they? Right, right. You know, so I think they're just looking for something to do, aren't they? Yeah, what do you right. think should be done with these communities that are popping up? Because they are rough sleepers at the end of the day. Well, they should be found somewhere to live, but not at the cost of us. I think, you know, obviously that's a rough, that's a crazy, I mean, I understand what you're saying, sir. The whose expenses is it going to be at? See, I, it'd be hard reacting because I'm just going to react off exactly what whoever says what and what I see. Like sometimes it don't even be fluent all the way through but it's uh, yeah. there needs to be some sort of rehoming um that needs to happen you need as soon as you try and move people on they're going to just going to go somewhere else it doesn't stop them from going further down so there needs to be some sort of program in place or some sort of government backing that gets them into a, into a home or into a nice uh, like into an area where they can feel safe i mean you're in between two busy roads here it, it can't be exactly nice living for them but um yeah i'm not really sure to be honest sure. and, and has it affected local businesses i mean your business yourself you guys do property is it or any of the local ones that you've heard of N no not as far as i'm aware to be honest uh no i think they're kind of from what i know they keep themselves themselves i mean i've never had an issue with them they've been here for months now and you know i, I haven't seen anything the only thing is you know i was walking past the other day and there was a, uh, a woman that was crouching down and going to the toilet behind a bush and you're kind of like that's not really what you want to see on your commute to work especially yeah. in this area but yeah. not as far as i'm aware but again you know that 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 is business dependent as well we've just arrived from australia today right, right. and we're, we're in the most expensive part of london how does it make you feel that you see something like that across the street oh uh, look i think um obviously it's a message what do, what kind of message do you think it's sending that there are people who need help yeah, yeah. Well, we haven't. We don't, we don't even know, know who they are. We don't know right, what, right, right. what message what, what, they're what do, you, what do you think should be done to, uh, you know, with those people who are there? Uh, Talk to them about what they need. Yeah. Try, try like accommodate them somehow. Depends what they need. Yeah. Are they there because they, they don't have homes? Is that what they are? Or are they no, no, pointing out some other political message? We see we haven't gone there yet. It's Hyde Park, you know. I'm not even mad at that lady. She wanted clarity. She's an outsider looking in like me. In front, so, so you, it's affecting the tourist attraction. Yeah, that, that's the kind of main message. They're not yes. really causing trouble, but it's more that there's a tent site in the middle of a, yeah. a busy city. Busy city, central London. So it's a tourist spot. So it should be not like that. <coughs> the government should, you know, take yeah. care of these things. I mean, this is something you might find in the woods, but not really in the no, middle no, of a... the central end. Yeah. Not, I mean, not at the central what, end. What do you think should be done? I mean, if anything should so, be done. Government should provide them a, a, a proper space to live and, and, and proper food or something like that. Yeah. So they should not, you know, live like here, like that. If it's rain or if it's, you know, you know, after one or two months, it, it will be cold. So how can they... They survive here. So just on Park Lane, you have Aston Martin, probably one of the most prestigious car brands you can find. And on this street alone, you've got 
hotels such as the Dorchester and the Hilton, where it can cost more than a thousand pounds per night. And the Dorchester, I think I know somebody that worked there. I think that was it. Just People. down the street is the tent town where migrants are sleeping rough in these tents. And it's basically an eyesore for the people living here and also the tourists who come to visit. So I want to find out who these people are and what they're doing here because I'm sure most of the locals won't agree with it. I'm sure most <laughs> this guy. So locals won't agree with it. <laughs> so you told me off camera that you're a local resident here. Uh, just down the road in Park Lane. What have you kind of noticed from the migrants coming here? Yeah, um, they were here probably four or five years ago and uh, they were asked to remove because behind here we've got TFL. TFL owns this land and most of the time they, they, they cause no problems, so no issues. Right. However, we've had some problems here. Um, like if you think to yourself, where do they go toilet? Mm -hmm. And the problem is that they poo in between cars. So, where I live, they squat between cars and poo because there's nowhere else for them to go toilet. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been... Hold on. Been around if they... is, what is this? Is this an electric Rolls Royce? I've, I haven't seen this. It's, it looks like electric. This is beyond my tax bracket. A Bentley and a Rolls Royce. It's, it's tough. They squat between cars and poo because there's nowhere else for them to go toilet. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been around here for couple hours and they've, they have been in those bushes down there as a makeshift kind of yeah urinal um, but do they cause any trouble in general or is it more just the kind of mess that they that's around yeah them? so they go through our bins which is a bit uh, frustrating so you usually they go through the bins see what's in the bins uh, but they don't pull it back so it's mess everywhere that that's uh, a negative and the other negative is the involvement with human trafficking and stuff so uh, three years ago we witnessed a meeting point here every saturday and the same bus used to come and pick people up we reported it to the police and then we found out that that minibus was coming all the way from romania uh picking up here and then going all the way up to New newcastle so human trafficking was oh, wow. being a problem and a lot of people here are professional beggars so parts of gangs out there um begging basically i've been here living here 11 years and we've had it twice big bean media it's now um as you can see you've got one tent two tent three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen if there was a taylor swift concert you know could they all camp here you know would the police let it health and safety we've had extinction rebellion take over um, Marble Arch before yeah. and the police came and moved them on so yeah it's just interested why they're still here why they're causing problems yeah and also next to a busy road I mean it's not exactly <coughs> safe I don't know how they sleep at night of all this traffic but that's their choice I guess yeah they have open fires hygiene's got to be an issue surely I'm, le I'm less about moaning about it and more about let's get a solution and yeah. put them somewhere yeah. Um, yeah. I mean what is the solution though is it put them in these hotels that you hear about the it's strange the contrast to the upper, I would say, what what we could the upper echelons, <laughs> the upper class, they they don't seem that concerned. As far as the, but also, I don't know. There's not being for, a lot aren't being forced. I don't know. <coughs> they rather figure out a solution and then then go complain too much. Migrant hotels. What what is the solution? Because I don't think they even claim asylum. These people, otherwise, they would be moved on. Yeah, to my knowledge. Uh... They are natural travellers, so I believe they have got a right to pick a land and keep it as theirs. But I think if it's private land, surely there's got to be some sort of negotiation or some time limit and then move on again. Uh, they've been here over a year already here uh, and we've had it for a couple of years during COVID. Yeah, speaking about COVID, it seemed like during those times they eliminated eliminated homelessness and people sleeping rough so i feel like the government does have the capacity to do it when they want to yeah i personally think there was less people on the streets less opportunities to uh beg meaning these guys left so as covid was quiet there wasn't people uh 
to collect money from. The tourists weren't coming right, and the right. workers weren't here, so they just all left. Hey guys, how are you doing? Wesley, nice to meet you. I, I make uh, documentaries on YouTube. No, no, no video, please. No okay, video. I, I made no, no, I close the video. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to ask you guys some questions. Like... As you can tell, it's extremely difficult to speak. Yeah, that same lady. She made, um, what's his name, buy food. He bought everybody food and then she did like an inter like a kind of an interview. Speak to these people and there's no way I'm paying £100 just to talk to them. But before I do... In my recent videos, I've been showing what's going on in the UK. And one thing I care about is how the mainstream media reports on these stories. Migration, both legal and illegal, gets so much attention in the news. But you have to ask yourself, who's on the ground reporting on these stories and who can you trust? The way the media covers these stories can seriously influence how you see the facts. That's why for this video, I've partnered with Ground News. Ground News is a- Shout out, uh, shout out Wes for the, uh, for the, uh, what's this called? <laughs> the ad, but I trust you. I don't know about, about no ground news. But I get it. You got to pay the bills. So many times when checking social health, Ash Wesley and the reporting army. Let's oh, right, yeah. tell him to calm down. She will say no camera. So tell her to calm down. Oh, right, yeah. right. I managed to find two lads who spoke a bit of English and agreed to talk with me. But it wasn't easy. The others really didn't want to be on camera. Just here, we can just sit here. Then we can this. Oh my god. We just sit here, just here. We can sit here. You can. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the spooky part of the journalism that we don't, I don't know what could happen right here. My friend. Uh, okay guys, so I made it into the tent town and here I'm joined by two of the lads who, who live here. So where are you both from? Romania. 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 Alright, sorry. And how come you choose to live here, next to the busy road? It's not very nice because I come people say bad words. I can't sleep for the car, they come. Well, yeah, it, it must be difficult to sleep here if you got all the cars, right? Yeah. Yeah? I, is it safe living here? Maybe. Yeah, it's safe. Yeah? Maybe. I'm only here, no problem. Yeah. And what's the reason you come to England? Why, why do you come to England? The bus. The oh, you bus. come by bus to England? But, uh, why do you choose England? Why, do, why don't you choose, say, uh, France or Germany? Why do you choose to come? Because here the people, you can uh, help us give it the house, the social, the work. Mm. Mm. Same story. England sweet when it comes to housing. It's the people. It's Once again, man. Don't hate the player, hate the game. This is the this is a system thing. It's a nice country here. Man. Right. So what do you do every day living here? Salt. What do you do here every day? I stay, I eat in Stay in family, yeah. speak how to think. How I to, see you, uh, the work something. I go find the work. Find the work, yeah. Oh, you want yeah. to find work? Yeah. So, uh, what work do you do now? Do you do now, no work, but I find work, yeah. You're trying to find work. Yeah. 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 Right. So, yeah. how, how do you earn money to get the, yeah. all this stuff and uh, the tents? How do you make money now? My auntie, my uncle, my mom go to begging to buy the food, the yeah. things. You'll beg? Yeah. Whereabouts do you beg? All around London? I don't know. <laughs> the mama oh, large, yeah. the right. daughter. So do you like living here? Like in the in the tents? Do you like it? It's not nice, brother, because look, his tent. Mm. No. This is what I will say, like real quick. A lot of people think this is like a choice. They don't. This is not a choice. I feel some of them. Some. Some of it. Like, put yourself like just hypothetically speaking. Do you know how hard it is 
how much pride a man has to set aside to ask for any type of help, just general help. Like, man, can I borrow like five dollars so I can? You know how hard that is as a man. Do you know how hard this must be? This, this gotta be. <coughs> Not gonna lie, you gotta feel low at sometimes. Oh, it's a frozen. It's a. I don't have shower or thing. Yeah, where where bad. do you, where do you shower? Where do you go to the toilet? How do you wash your body? You know. The hotel. The. I found the hotel. Restaurant. The restaurant. Right, right. So you go into the, the restaurant, yeah, Costa Coffees, and yeah, yeah. go to the toilet. Wow. Sometimes you go to my uncle, you have the home, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. But what, why is everyone Romanian? You're like a family or something? Yeah, everything is family here. Right. And you all have different job. This woman clean, another one. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Me okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, you all have different job in this area. Yeah, cooking. Yeah. yeah. After this, where do you want to go? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think in this. I want to try for find a job or take one for house, one house for... or stay here for a better life. Yeah. Because yeah. You know that. But so I don't think they think too far ahead in the future. That that they just be thinking about the next. The next 24 hours, you know. Someone told me you got to be living some in some type of comfort to think in towards the future. Who comes here to check on you guys? He told me there's people who come here and can help you. Have you spoken to those people from the government? Mm. The huh? Yeah. That they come to they come to help you. Some people. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes coming the people this. Yeah. And what happened they when they? for help for something. Yeah. I yeah. speak to us. Uh, how do you want for help you? I tell, find me one job, give me the one room for sleep mm. on my family because yeah. for sleeping in the street is not good. Right. Right. And you guys have passport and some papers to show them. Yeah. Yeah. I have passport. Right. Is it, yeah, like European passport. Yeah. Right. So that that's how you come to England. You come by the bus with your European yeah. passport. Right. 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 I have only the residence, only no problem. Right. Okay. So you give them your information, the government. You give them your information yeah. and tell them. Yeah. How long have you been waiting for help? I don't know. This is problem. I don't know. I mean, some people told me you guys have been here for more than one year. How, how long have you stayed here? No. No. My family is, but me and my cousin, no, I have one. When did you When three, did you come here? Three, three, three months. Two months. Wow, wow. So a few months. What What happens when it get when it's winter and it's very cold? I ain't gonna lie. Two, three months is a long time. Two, three days is is a stretch. That's. I'm trying to be. I'm not being insensitive. I'm just saying, like me. Thinking and putting myself into the shoes, it's like, dang. Cold, what will you do? <coughs> it's a sign of have the... I buy the jacket, yeah. I buy something, but I buy st still, more still stay here? You're yeah. Yeah? You still stay here well, when it's cold? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How do you get all the tents? I mean, the tents cost a lot of money, no? You know, uh, car market. Car market? Yeah. Like a car boot sale? Yeah. How much is a tent? Because you have a lot of things. There's a tent and the bed. 10, 20 pounds. And how much money can somebody earn begging on the street every day? 10 pounds, 50 pounds. Right. Uh, depends. Yeah. Do you have someone who looks after you? like, Or something like this? Is there some kind of leader? of this? Uh, no this leader, no. Everything the same. The same. Right. Family, no leader. No. So if someone... Just the, the oldest the oldest person there is the leader. Eh? Tomorrow he comes here and says we have a house for you. You will you will go. Yeah, it's yeah. perfectly. Yeah, it's perfect. Save save me. Right. Save because, only. Because in England right now, a lot of people say they want to help people like yourselves, but I'm not sure if they'll actually bring you to their house. But people want to help refugee. They say yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. But in Romania, you don't have a war, right? What? Why did you leave Romania? In Romania, this is a bad very life. Very busy. It's in the low. It's a bad life. Romania mafia. Right, right. So, <laughs> so in Romania, the mafia. What? What will the mafia do? Who? He, he said the mafia. Romania has some mafia. It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, joking. Okay. Right. 
But how, how bad is Romania? Because there isn't a war there or something like that. Oh, I don't know, man. Gotta read between them lines. I don't know. He said that and they look like he wasn't supposed to say that. They're slightly seen other countries. Because country. in Romania, the work I pay in money of the England, two, I pay... Two, three hundred for a month. For a month. And the two, three hundred is not money. Why? Right, for to pay the pay house, rent to pay... pay the cost of you don't get paid equally for the cost of living up there i'm pretty sure like the work that they did there was it's definitely probably more pay here in england but it's cost of living crisis everywhere factor the lights the so water, so you're saying the food. It, yeah so in romania to live and uh, to earn money, you don't get a lot of money. Maybe what, 200 pounds or something? 300 for a month, pay. For a month? For One month. month, right. But do you think in England you make more money? Yeah. Because I come here, because of a better life. Or here, <coughs> maybe one work is 500, 1000 for a month here. But so you can make this much begging? You make a lot of money begging? No, no, no. Real work. He's talking about real work. Like when the, when it all pans out and they finally reach where they need to reach, he talking about the work, the real work that I do in Romania only pays two to three hundred dollars, compared to the real work that I can do here. Five to one thousand. Five hundred one. The begging, no problem. But you said you make maybe five hundred, one thousand in England. This is begging. On or? Orc. In Orc. but what? in begging, you day on one mount. 200, 250 wait, wait, a month. Right, right, okay. Sure, sure. Like so work. where do you go to buy all your food and this kind of thing? I mean, you have lots of things. All from the car boot or? The for uh, Sainsbury. You go to Sainsbury's, yeah, yeah. And what about like a uh, mobile phone, all this kind of thing? Yeah, recharge. The phone in Romania. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people here. I think there's maybe 20 tents. Are they all your family or yeah, yeah, where, exactly. like where's, where's your mom and dad? This, this guy, he's getting a little irritable. So whoever's behind the camera. My mom is here. Right, and you too? No, I'm single here. Did you come by yourself? Yeah. Oh, where's your family? It's at home. Right, right. So, so by doing this, you give money to them? Romanian, yeah. It's yeah. for me in my life. Right, right. How, how do you send money back to Romania? Do you have a bank account? or Money account. What's that? Monogram. Yeah. Well, like an app on the Just phone? No. -uh. Like what? I don't know. I, I... Moneygram, you got to go actually into the store and you give them like a pin number and they have to go to a store as well. <coughs> and they have to have the pin number and it gets released to you or something like that. Go for... Uh, to the I money want shop. To send this money. Right, right, yeah, right. right. The name, the how. Right. That's it. Okay. okay. Maybe when you earn enough money begging, will you go back to Romania or you want to stay in England to, to maybe beg? Stay for stay for find something. Yeah. Speaking to them both, I don't think they're being completely honest about the whole operation. However, I don't think they'd share that on camera either way. Regardless, everyone deserves to have a roof over their head. I buy for Primark. Wow, so this is where he sleeps every night. This is a tent, he's got a blanket and a pillow. And it's kind of like on this metal metal thing here and this uh, this protects you from the rain this yeah, yeah. Who, who makes it's all this do you make it yourself right. where do you sleep can i see same room oh wait you share well okay so t two of you and one okay well okay so they share a tent they got to apparently like two can fit in here now look what they have here umbrellas they've got blankets some slippers but this is where they live, and right? And they got it all elevated off the ground, so when it rains or snows, they won't get wet. That's probably why it was on that, like, metal thing as well. That's the Hyde Park. Just across here. This is the tent town. And I guess the women, there's mostly women here at the minute. I guess they stay here to cook, whilst the men or maybe other people go out and apparently beg, is what they told me. And this is, isn't even a tent. This is just one that's been made out of bits of wood I guess from the trees from Hyde Park and made into a kind of shelter it's like a makeshift I ain't gonna lie you got exclusive access Wesley camp wow 
talking about that. They, when the other guy came, they made him buy the food. He bought the food, and they gave him like a. At least it was only shown on the internet, like twenty second interviews. It was maybe less than that. Got him out of there immediately. Yeah, so like I said, none of them want to be on film, but really interesting. There's about 10 tents here, and they've all been, yeah, kind of congregated in this area. Right next to this busy road. I'm guessing this is how they get their water. They rely on these big, big uh, bottles over here. And I really don't know what's going to happen during the winter when it gets a bit colder and starts raining. I spent more time in the camp and it felt like its own little world. It seemed they had a system in place to make but Was that a rug? Time in the camp and it felt like its own little world. It seemed Yeah, that's a rug right here. It seemed they had a system in place <coughs> to make living there sustainable. Okay, so the lady here said she's making a big chicken. Okay. Never got all the I'm not gonna lie, that looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it look Smells fresh too. Like, what is it like? Chicken noodle soup almost, but no noodles? Yes. I don't know how they clean all the pots and pans. Clean it, clean it. Okay. Yeah, they don't want to be on camera, so I don't want to get their faces in. But yeah, she's cooking up a big meal for the, um, for the people living in these tents. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's the thickening agent. People. Okay, this is some Romanian cake he's told me they're they eating. Okay, guys, so I spent some. I ain't gonna lie, that look good. <laughs> Go back for one second. Okay, this is some Romanian cake he's told me they're they eating. Okay. Uh, I might have took a bite. Okay, guys, so I spent some time speaking with the locals there. I don't know if you can call them locals, but they built some kind of community where they're eating, sleeping, and they also, I've been told, I've seen people come down here to use the toilet it's almost like a makeshift toilet but it's not about race or religion they're actually like orthodox so uh, Christians apparently that's what they told me but as you can see we're right next to a busy road it's not exactly safe I was told <coughs> that excuse me earlier that people have actually come to give them support I don't know if they took it or if it's the government's job to um to, you know to kind of help them and relocate them but Clearly, at the end of the day, they are people and they need help. But at the same time, should they even be living there? They're living there by choice. They've come all the way from Romania and we don't know who these people are. Some of them don't even have documentation or anything like this. And literally just this week, a girl, a mother and a daughter were stabbed in Leicester Square five minutes, five minutes down the road from here by a Romanian migrant. And it just raises the question, should these people be living here? And are we safe being in one of the most expensive, luxurious areas with loads of tourists? But yeah, that's for you guys to decide. But this was the tent town of Romanian migrants. And I'll see you for the next one. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to go follow Wesley's channel, man. Crazy stuff going on.